Alam. To burn. To be aflamed. To be fired up. For this year's new evangelization conference, we are called to be fired up by the Holy Spirit with our hearts burning for Christ through a powerful encounter with the Word of God. The blue flame indicates complete and efficient combustion. Ito ang pinakamainit na ningas at nagpapakita ng buo at mabisang paggamit ng panggatong. Bilang mga Katolikong Pilipino, tayong lahat ay pinatawag upang italaganap ang salita ng Diyos ng buong buo at sa mabisang paraan. Tayo ay lubos na pinupuno ng Espiritu Santo ng lakas upang ganap na ibahagi ang pagmamahal ng Diyos sa lahat. Lahat. All. Each and every one. We are all called to be sent out as missionaries, as evangelizers, to share the Word of God to each and every one. Lahat tayo. Ako, ikaw, tayong lahat. Mga Katolikong Pilipino, nagaalab ang puso ng buong buo, ganap, tapat at totoo para kay Kristo. Welcome to the New Evangelization Conference 2020. This year will be different. In this time of the new normal, God will meet us in our homes to inspire us, to revive us, and to empower us. Six days of meeting Christ, living Christ, and sharing Christ. In the darkness, His light will shine. In the face of despair, Hope will arise. Jesus is here. He is alive. As one body of Christ, let us open our hearts and let the Holy Spirit fire us up with faith, hope, and charity. For in a time such as this, our mission continues. And God calls us, Filipino Catholics, to be missionary disciples to the ends of the earth. Ako. 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 Ako ay Katolikong Pilipino. Katolikong Pilipino. Katolikong Pilipino. Nag-aalab ang puso. Nag-aalab ang puso. Nag-aalab ang puso. Nag-aalab ang puso. Nag-aalab ang puso para kay Kristo. 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 Ako ay Katolikong Pilipino. Nag-aalab ang puso para kay Kristo. Good evening, brothers and sisters. My name is Mael Vallejo, your servant from the Community Missionary Families of Christ Singles. Maligayang pagdating at pagdalo sa ating new Evangelization Conference 2020. And for this year, our team is Alam. It came from the verse, the story of the, from the road to Emmaus, from the Gospel of Luke chapter 4, verse 32. And it says, Hindi baga nag-aalab ang ating puso, sa loob natin habang tayo kinakausap niya sa daan samantalang binubuksan niya sa atin ang mga kasulatan. How are you feeling tonight? Okay naman? I pray that everything is alright with you and your family. Kahit na may pandemic, 
kahit na may quarantine period tayo, ay patuloy pa rin pinag-aalab ng Diyos ang ating pananampalataya. We continue our mission through the grace of technology that He is giving us. Kaya naman, tuloy na tuloy pa rin ang NEC natin ngayong taon. Magkakalayo man tayo ngayon, ay pinaglalapit at pinagbubuklod pa rin tayo ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ng Kanyang mga salita na ngayon ay mananahan sa ating mga puso. And as we begin this conference, let us encounter the Lord in worship. But before we worship, allow me to share to you my story of faith with the Lord. Tonight, we are going to talk about faith, pananampalataya. Ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng pananampalataya? I personally ask this question myself. It is easy to believe when all our prayers are being answered. Kapag nag-aalign yung mga plans natin with the will of God. Kapag na-appreciate yung mga work natin sa trabaho, or kaya naman walang walang nagkakasakit sa family natin. Pero, paano naman kung hindi na naaayon yung mga plans natin with the will of God? Especially in this time of crisis, our faith is really being tested. Mahirap na kasi magtiwala kapag may fear tayo na baka bukas, wala na tayong makain. Or kaya naman, pag nalift na tong quarantine, baka wala na tayong mabalikan na trabaho. Or yung mga susunod na araw, sa mga susunod na araw, baka naman yung mga kakaunting na ipon natin, maubos na. Or yung mga pinaplano natin sa buhay natin na napakatagal na, baka hindi na natin magawa. With all these uncertainties, hindi natin may iwasan na ma-feel na ma-down, na ma-discourage, na magkaroon ng feeling ng loneliness. And we find ourselves asking God, Why, Lord, why? Pero, it's amazing how the Lord uses different ways to make us feel that we are not alone. And for me, God used the scriptures through live the word. Through reading and, and reflecting with my brothers and sisters, I feel that my faith is getting deeper. Through their inspiring testimonies, I feel that He is speaking to me and His voice is becoming clearer. Para bang sinasabi niya sa akin na, huwag kang matakot, nandito lang ako. With all the sufferings that we are experiencing right now, hindi tayo pinapabayaan ni God. We are reminded of this verse from Isaiah and it says, When you pass through waters, I will be with you. Through rivers, you shall not be swept away. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, nor will flames consume you. Brothers and sisters, ngayong gabi, bawat isa sa atin ay iba't iba ang pinanggagalingan. We may experience a lot of fears, we may experience a lot of anxieties, we may experience a lot of failures, but whatever state our hearts are in right now, remember that God's grace is upon us. All we need to do is have faith and believe in Him. And tonight, let us ask the Holy Spirit to give us the spirit of revival that will enable us to be faithful to Him and to continue His works here on earth. As we pray and as we glorify our Lord in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Praise you, Lord God, we glorify you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord God, we glorify you. shines upon us you give abundant showers of praise to refresh your weary people stir us again for revival 
that you always be known on the earth. Oh, so let the rains pour down harder. Let the river run wider. Let the winds carry farther. Let the fire burn brighter. Spirit of revival. People proclaim it And this move of His Spirit No words can describe it No darkness can hide it So the land will yield its harvest And the Lord God will bless us And the whole earth will fear Him The kings will revere Him And glorify Jesus keeping us safe amidst this pandemic that we are having right now. We pray that you continuously remain in us, Lord God. We pray that you journey with us in this new evangelization conference. And as we start, prepare our gifts, prepare our hearts, Lord God, prepare our minds, Lord God, prepare our whole being, Lord God, as we listen 
to the sessions, Lord God, as we listen to the workshops, Lord God, that you have prepared for us all throughout this week. We ask for your Holy Spirit to activate us and to empower us and to bring the fire and joy of service in evangelizing your people to the ends of the earth. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. And glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. A blessed evening, everyone. Sabi mo nandito ka. Sabi mo hindi mo ko iiwan. Sabi mo wag akong mangamba. Pero ang dami-daming rason para hindi na lang ako maniwala, para tumingin na lang sa paligid malungkot at mabalisa. Patuloy na tumataas ang bilang ng may sakit, pagod na ang mga nagsisialay ng kanilang mga buhay, ang dami nang namatay sa buong mundo. Saan napupulutin ang tao pagkatapos ng lahat ng ito? Pero kahit ano pang tanong ng puso't utak ko, wala naman akong ibang magawa kung hindi ang bumalik sa'yo. Pagkat ang iyong salita ay buhay at mabisa. Sa pag-iisip at mga haka ng puso ay madaling kumilala. Patuloy na nangungusap, nangahamon, nagbibigay buhay sa kahit anong panahon. Kahit minsan pakiramdam ko'y di mo ko pinakikinggan. Patuloy mo kong iniimbitahan na kumapit at magtiwala. Siguro dahil hindi lang ito tungkol sa iyong minika. Dahil ikaw mismo ang salita. Ang salita na naging tao at nanirahan sa aming piling. Ang salita na tumatapik sa aking damdamin upang ako'y may gawin. Ang salita na aking pinakamikiin. Oo na, sabi mo na dito ka, hindi mo ko iiwan. Na huwag akong mangamba. Sabi ng puso ko, tama ka. Indeed, the Word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern the reflections and thoughts of the heart. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 Good day po sa inyong lahat. I am Father Arlo Bernardo Yap SVD. At ngayon po, we will discuss the Word of God in the light of this title, Fired Up with Faith. Ano ang epekto ng Word of God in our lives? What is life with the Word of God? And how this Word of God affects your life and my life. To begin with, let us watch Sister Maria Adelfa Valdivieso and Brother E.J. Porta. Both of them are members of the family Disciples of the Word. And they're going to narrate to us how the Word of God affected their lives and what are the effects of this Word of God in their own day-to-day -day living. Let us welcome Sister Maria Adelfa Valdivieso and Brother E.J. Porta. Uh, bago ko po dumating sa akin ang, ang liturgical Bible study, marami pong nilakbay yung buhay ko. Nung bata po ako, lumaki akong hindi naniniwala sa Diyos dahil sa aking mga naranasan. Sa karanasan na yun, sa halip na hanapin ko ang Diyos, ay pinahawakan ko ang paniniwala na walang Diyos sa halip ay humanap ng ibang kapangyarihan dahil gusto ko na I-iganti yung sarili ko 
sa pangaabuso sa akin. Ginawa kong matapang ang, ang aking sarili uh, hanggang sa napunta ako sa underground movement ng mga samahan ng mga kabataan ng laban, lumalaban sa gobyerno. Sa aking paniniwala na walang Diyos, naging kasama ako ng, ng mga satanista. Hinanap kong kapangyarihan ay ang kapangyarihan ng kadiliman. Alam niyo po yung kanta ni, ni Ray Valera na uh, napakalayo pa ng umaga, malayo pa ang umaga. Lagi akong naghihintay ng, ng pag-asa. Pero yung, yung paghihintay ko ng pag-asa na yon ay nakasalalay sa aking sariling lakas. At nagpatuloy ang aking pamumuhay na yon Pagdating ng pagkakataon na hindi ko naiganti yung aking sarili, sa kabila ng lahat ng mga ginawa ko, nabuhay ako lagi sa takot. At pagka dumidilim na at pagka nag-iisa ako, Lagi akong umiiyak, lagi akong natatakot. Sa, sa kaguluhan na yon, sinandalan ko din ang, ang paggamit ng drugs para makatulog ako. Para sa pagtulog ko, makalimutan ko na iba, iba ako, na hindi ko pinagdaanan ang lahat ng mga, ng mga hirap na yon. Punong-puno ng galit ang, ang puso ko. Tumating ang pagkakataon, 27 years old na ako nung... Dumaan ang, ang Diyos sa buhay ko na nahintuan ako ng yung pagdating ni, ni Pope John Paul II. Ngayon ay santo na siya. Nahintuan niya ako sa corner ng Rojas Boulevard at ng Quirino Avenue. Sa paghinto niya, nandun ako sa iba pa nakatingin siya sa akin. At sa unang pagkakataon ng buhay ko, naramdaman ko yung kapayapaan. At umpisa noon, nagkaroon ng pagbabago sa, sa isip ko na kung, kung ang taong ito ay hindi pa Diyos na sinasabi nila, gano'n na yung naramdaman kong kapayapaan. Ano pa kaya kung makilala ko din yung Diyos na sinasabi niya? Pagkatapos ng pagkakataon na yun, ng encounter na yun, nakilala ko yung mga kabataan ng aming parokya. At kahit hindi nila ako naiintindihan kasi kaiba ako, nahirapan ako magsalita, um, inunawa, ininaw, inunawa nila ako, tinanggap nila ako, at naging kaibi, nagkaroon ako ng mga bagong kaibigan. At nakilala ko din doon yung aking kaibigan at yung kaibigan kong yon siya yung aking napangasawa. Uh, siya yung nagpakilala sa akin sa Diyos at tinanggap niya ako ng, ng buong buo, ng walang katanungan at tinulungan niya ako ibangon yung aking sarili. Uh, 2004, uh, sinasama niya ako sa Bible study. Uh, pumupunta kami sa Christ the King. Kaya lang, pag nag, naghihimay na kami ng, ng liturgical Bible study, pagdating ng application, sumasama na yung loob ko, nagagalit na ako. Kasi yung pakiramdam ko, yung application, ang pinag-usapan nila na yun yung application questions na tuwing Bible study namin, lagi akong kinakausap ng salita ng Diyos. Hanggang sa uh, hindi na ako kailangan pilitin, unti-unti na nababag na nakikita ko nararamdaman ko na parang parang masaya na ako <laughs> at naramdaman ko ang Diyos ay kinakausap niya ako lagi sa kanyang mga salita hanggang sa dumating sa akin ang paniniwala na totoong may Diyos Ngayon, kagaya ng, ng mga alagad sa road uh, sa road ng Imaus na nung nakilala nila, na-recognize nila si God, 
nag-alab ang kanilang ang kanilang puso. Ganun din yung aking naramdaman nung nagkaroon ng kalinawan ang aking isipan, nagbukas ang aking puso. Naramdaman ko yung pag-aalab na yon na kailangan kong ibahagi ang salita ng Diyos sa iba kasi minsan may mga kabataan din na kagaya ko na na nabuhay sa galit, nabuhay sa kadiliman ng buhay, ng lungkot. Ngunit kailangan nila na lamang pala ng, ng salita ng Diyos para makakita ng pag-asa, ng pananampalataya, ng paniniwala. Ang pinakamalaking biyaya na binigay ng, ng salita ng Diyos sa buhay ko. Ngayon at the age of 50, pwede kong sabihin na Uh, totoong ang pangako ng Diyos na dumating siya mag, para magbigay ng isang buhay na ganap at kaaya-aya. At ang buhay na yon na ganap ay nakaaya-aya ay nararanasan ko ngayon kasama ng aking pamilya, ng aking mga anak, ng aking asawa, ng family disciples of the world na, na nagmimisyon na makarating ang salita ng Diyos sa bawat pamilya. Hello, my name is EJ and I'm currently 13 years old. Hi, I'm Isaac Porta. I'm 12 years old and we are part of a community called Family Disciples of the Word. A community that spreads the Word of God to families and individuals through the liturgical Bible study. We started doing liturgical Bible study seven years ago, but we've been exposed to it because our parents were very active in our young age. They would facilitate our helpers at home while they would just play around. But eventually, since they did it every Sunday, I was intrigued to join them. So, I joined them. And when I did, I found it very enjoyable. But what was the most important part for me during that time was the Hibla. Because as a kid, it was an easy way for me to convey the message that I've learned in the liturgical Bible study, for it was a short and easy message to understand. I believe Isaac um, was introduced to it in a very uh, other way. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when I was about the age of four, I, I believe, uh, my mom asked me if I could just sit down beside them when they were doing their Bible study. So I did. I was just sitting down there listening to what they were doing. And months passed by and I decided I would just join them instead of just sitting down. Hmm. And as Isaac said, as we both started, We eventually learned how to answer questions more often. We learned how to read more properly until I reached the age of six when I thought of something. In our community, there are elders like my mom, my dad, and my aunt who would give insights. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I did it too? So I asked them. But they turned me down since they didn't know what I was capable during that night. So, I kept on asking them, and eventually, they allowed me to do it. It took me one week to prepare for this insight. And there was a lot of crying, arguments, but it all turned out to be good. And it, it was a first successful insight in front of our community. And Isaac also did the same, but I think in a different circumstance. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember when I became more active in the Bible study, I remember that when I was about the age of seven, my mom asked me if I could give give a uh, insight because normally if you facilitate in our community, you're supposedly gonna give the insight the next week. So I said yes because I was very excited, but in the same time I was very nervous and scared. So I prepared the whole week, but in the Sunday. I was very nervous, so I just backed out, and my brother had to do it for me. And um, months passed by. It was still I was still seven years old, and my mom asked me again if I could uh, give an insight because I still kept facilitating. 
So I said yes because once again, I was very excited, but still I was very nervous and shy and scared of what I'm about to say. So in that whole week, uh, I was really not minding it because I thought to myself that I would finish it like very easily. But when it was a Saturday, uh, I learned that it wasn't a very easy task. So I had to cram it the whole night, but I sadly, I couldn't finish it. So the next day, I woke up very early and I was able to finish my insight and was success and I successfully gave it to our community. Hmm. As we started to give insight, I also started. And together, we've been invited to many places, including Father Arlo 6 p.m. Masses, the Bible Congress in Lawag, and even the Kerygma Conferences with Father Arlo. Until now, and whenever we're going to school, our parents and my brother, we would read the daily readings and we would give our insights about the readings of that time. And now we are facilitating a Bible study to our cousin who, is, who lives in USA. Uh, and that is every Thursday and every Sunday we would facilitate to our relatives. So throughout all those years of doing Bible study, uh, there are some things we learned that we can apply in our daily lives. For me personally, I would remember that I would just keep praying whenever I have challenges in my life because I know when I pray to God, He would be there to guide me in what I'm, what I'm about to face and that He will not abandon me. Okay, thank you. For me, the most important part can be summed up in one sentence and that is to God be the glory. You know, I told you a while ago that making uh, an insight or doing seminars it takes a long process and like i mentioned a while ago that long process has crying arguments many things but with the guidance of the holy spirit like what the sentence says to god be the glory by giving everything to him i can do anything i was able to do everything that was put in front of me and by doing that i've seen many people be touched, be moved by the words that I was saying, by the words of God. And that's why I realized that the words of God aren't just words. They can move people. They can they can be they can make people more positive. And that's why I'm so thankful that Jesus is using me as an instrument, using us as an instrument to share the word of God and to share the joy of the gospel. Thank you. Thank you. We praise the Lord for the effects of the Word of God in the lives of Maria Adelfa Valdivieso and E.J. Porta. What is in the Word of God? Ano yung effect nito sa atin? Why will it tell us that this is sharper than two-edged sword and penetrating even the soul and spirit? joins and marrow and able to discern the reflections and thoughts of the heart. Papan. There are many ways in presenting the Word of God. Kind of packaging, kind of approaches presenting the Word of God to other people and to myself. How do I take the Word of God? For me, the Word of God is food. Ang pinanggagalingan nito ay from Matthew chapter 4, verses 3 to 4. If you remember, Jesus was fasting and praying for 40 days and 40 nights. Imagine Jesus at that time was around, around one month na hindi kumakain. So he must be very weak, tired, at gutom na gutom. And here comes Satan approaching Jesus, saying, if you are the Son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. And Jesus said, one doesn't live by bread alone, but every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. If you analyze it, 
one does not live by bread alone. That is only for the stomach. But the word of God is meant for the mind. This is feeding the stomach. But this one is feeding the mind. Therefore, the word of God is food for thought. How is that important? Don't forget. It all begins with the way you think. It all begins with the way you think. The way you think is the way you feel. The way you feel is the way you behave. The way you behave is the way you become. So, if you want to change the person, change the way he thinks. Tingnan niyo po si Sister Maria Adelfa at si Brother EJ. The way they thought, the way they think now, iba na sila. If you want to change the person, change the way he thinks. Kaya nga, it all begins with the way you think. It's all in the mind. Another example. When someone, for example, approaching me, Father, may problema ako. Dito, Father, yung asawa ko, medyo Father, iyakaya siya. Then after listening to her, I gave the advice. And after that, he will, she will tell me, Father, thank you, ah, na enlighten ako. Enlighten. Now, the root word is light. Tell me what's light in Tagalog. Correct. Maliwanag. Not dark. Another one. The second one. Yes. Magaan. Not heavy. Look, brothers and sisters. It's all in the mind. The way you think is the way you feel. The way you feel is the way you behave. The way you behave is the way you become. Nagliwanag muna ang pag-iisip. At saka pa lang gagaang kalooban. Not all the way around. Again, liwanag mo ng pag-iisip at saka palang gagaang kalooban. Not all the way around. Kaya nga the word of God is to feed your mind. Do you believe that we only eat the body and blood of Jesus in the Holy Mass? Do you believe so? No. We not only eat the body and blood of Jesus during the Eucharist. We also eat the Word of God during the liturgy of the Word. Kaya nga dalang best time kumakain sa Holy Mass, the Word of God, and the Eucharist. Now, if this Word of God will fire up with faith in our lives, we have to eat the Word of God to feed our mind. Now, this is what we do in feeding the mind. For example, I have here pasta. Hindi ko lang niluto. Just for you to see them. And then, I will serve the pasta on your plate. Now, question is, what tool shall I use to give or to serve the pasta on your plate? Shall I use a knife to put the pasta on your plate? No. Shall I use a teaspoon to serve the pasta on your plate? No. Anong tool ang mas magandang gawin? If not knife, if not teaspoon, what should I use? Maybe a tongue. This more effective tool to serve the pasta on your plate. Therefore, my dear friends, walang problema sa pasta. Ang problema yung tool. Likewise, walang problema rin sa word of ang problema kung anong tool ang pwedeng gamitin. Ang liturgical Bible study is a tool, is a methodology. It is meant and it is designed to prepare people and even the clergy and all the religious for the coming Sunday Mass. Because the Sunday Mass is the most sustainable activity of any Catholic Christian. 
sinasadya nila ang ating Santa Misa. Kaya nga, liturgical Bible studies designed to prepare you and me sa pagsisimba natin para mas malalim ang ating pagkain na silita ng Diyos at pagkain ng Eucharistia. Ang liturgical Bible study is meant to feed the mind and to feed our soul sa ating Holy Mass. Kaya nga, ito yung nangyari kina Sister Maria Adelfa at Brother Ichi, the way they feed their minds. The Word of God is full. And this is the one that will make the Word of God living and effective. Because the Word of God is full. At kung yung Word of God ay pagkain ng ating pagkatao, through liturgical Bible study, anong ibig sabihin ng firing up with faith through the Word of God. Parang ganito yan. In our lives, there are many things happen in the past and also right now. Marami nangyayari. Some of them happy, some of them sad. Some of them joyful, some of them painful. Ano ngayon ang Word of God sa buhay ko kung ako'y nagdadaan sa isang kadilinan? Therefore, descriptions of darkness in me and in you. One, I call this being blemished. Yung blemish na ito, yung madumi ako, madumis ka. Parang we are so unclean, the people will avoid us. Marami tayong kadumihan, karumihan sa buhay. Yung ating mga kasalanan. Yung ating maybe past decisions in life. Maling mga decision. Kaya naging marumi tayo. Two, marami tayong mga abuses. Na-abuse ka, na-abuse ako, halimbawa. Tapos, people took advantage of us. You and I were abused. Maraming nagtitake advantage sa Number three, we are lost. Being lost means hindi mo lang ka sa kapupunta. Ang huli mong alam ay yun lang, pero ano yung nasa harapan mo? Saan ka pupunta? Maybe because of so many painful experiences, you don't want to try anymore. You don't want, you don't have any strive to go on. Kasi nasaktan ka na eh. And then, you were abandoned. Wala, iniwanan ka. Rejected ka. They do not anymore give you appreciation and acceptance. Kaya nga, B, blemished. A, abused. L, lost. And A, abandoned. You call this bala. Kaya nga mga tao, they tend to be violent. Because of their past experiences. They tend to hurt other persons because of these past experiences. And this is bala. Kaya nga, isang bala ka lang, nasabi nila. Pag gusto mo gumante, isang bala ka lang, nasabi nila. Nakakatakot. Hindi lahat tayo ay perfecto. Tandaan mo. Sa Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, When God saw everything He created, He saw them very good. He didn't say He saw them perfect. He, no. Hindi perfect ang nakakakinakikita niya. He saw them very good. Therefore, you and I are good and even more than good enough. But we are not perfect. So we have these experiences na pagkakamali. We have the experiences that people would hurt us. At gusto mong pirahin sila na isang bala. Not literally as paparilid talaga, but yung emotions mo parang bumabaril sa iba. At binabaril mo rin sarili mo. At hindi lang yan, binabaril mo ang Diyos. Anong kailangan? Malaking bagay ang Word of God. Kung ito man halimbawa, ang nakapagbigay liwanag, buhay, at magandang 
epekto sa buhay ni na Maria Adelpha at saka ni Brother E.J. Ganun din pa sa iyo. Sa iyong bala na yun, blemished, abused, lost, and abandoned, pwede maging alam. Mag-aalam ang puso ko dahil sa salita ng Diyos. I am fired up with my faith because of the Word of God in my life. Parang ganito. Ito ibig sabihin ng buhay natin. The way I look at myself, the way I look at others, and the way I look at God. At marami tayong painful experiences. Kaya nga, yung bala ay para bagang gusto kong manakit, gusto kong sakit ang sarili ko. Ayoko na maniwala si Diyos. Wala na akong pakinam sa Kanya sapagat wala siyang pakinam sa akin. Anong pinagdadaanan ko kung gano'n ang aking pag-iisip? Siguro dahil maraming pagkakataon na ako ay hindi tinanggap asayang. Maraming pagkakataon na na-accidente ako halimbawa. Yung mga times na hindi ko ginusto pero nangyaring hindi maganda. For example, yung calamities. Yung mga namatay sa Pagdong Yolanda halimbawa. Hindi mo gusto yung nangyari. Pero kalamidad siya. Another one, for example, is the way you look at others. Tingnan mo, a lot of expectations from others. At marami ka expectations sa kanila. Sometimes these expectations hindi nag-meet. Nakakasira na loob. Kamisan, painful and wounded. And last, feeling mo iniwanan ka ng Diyos. Feeling mo, pag nagdadasal ka, hindi ka pinapakinggan. Nang Diyos ay mayroong deaf ears. Bingi-bingihan siya. At hindi niya nalalaman ang nangyayari sa buhay mo. Wala siyang pakialam kasi. At yun ang tingin mo sa Kanya. At ito ang bala. Iting pain. Iting ating tayas. Iting ating kadulima sa buhay. So, anong pwede kong gawin with the Word of God in me? Bubuksan ko, pag-aaralan ko, using liturgical Bible study as my tool, I am prepared for the coming Sunday. Ano mang sabihin ng pare during the Mass, dagdag sa akin, makakatulong pa sa akin. Ito yung Word of God na kailangan ng isang taong nasa kadiliman. Ito epekto niya. If this is the Word of God, mag-aalab tayo sa ating panampalataya. Una, acceptance of God's Word in your life. Tingnan niyo po, pansinin niyo po yung ating glass. It's firing up from the bottom. Pansinin niyo po mamaya. Acceptance of the Word of God. Kasi pag tinanggap mo salita ng Diyos, mas maraming kakainin ng pag-iisip mo at mas maraming pagkakatong magtago. Pangalawa, if I accept the Word of God, then leading me to transformation. Yung sinasabi ko kanina, nagbabagong pagkatao. Leading me to transformation. Nagkakaroon din ako ng transfiguration. Kasi Jesus ang nagpapakain sa akin ng kanyang salita with the power of the Holy Spirit. Then, assuring me of God's presence and power. Tandamin niyo po. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. Behold, I am with you always. Jesus did not say, I will be with you always. Hindi niya sinabi. Sinabi niya, Behold, I am with you always because it means right here, right now, He is with us until the end of the age. That assurance in me. Kaya nga, ang power of the Holy Spirit is given to us to assure that God will never abandon us. Then, because of that assurance, 
I become a blessing to others. Blessing because I am loved by the Lord. I am enlightened by His word. And I am a blessing to others. My dear friends, we call that alam. A, acceptance of God's word. L, leading to transformation. A, assurance of God's presence and power. And B, blessing to others. Friends, we are so blessed because of the word of God given to us by the apostles. We are so blessed because God has never left us, has never abandoned us. Kapatid, tandaan mo, indeed, the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. God bless you all, and to God be the glory. Hello, my name is Katie Niana, 20 years old, taga Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Second year na nag-aaral sa university. Noong 9 years old pa lang ako, noong lumipat na kami dito sa Canada. Akala ko magiging sobrang masaya na ako dahil asenso ah, na kami. Pero bago simula ulit ng buhay at sobrang hirap niya na kinailangan ko aralin ulit lahat. Wala kaming kotse. Walang trabaho si nanay si tatay. Tapos nakikitira lang kami sa malayong relative namin. At kahit pagkain, kinailangan namin lagi pumunta sa food bank, sa charity para lang humingi ng pagkain. Pero fast forward to now, na ang akala ko na magbibigay sa akin ng saya ay ang paglipat sa ibang bansa. Ang tumabad na itong saya ay nung nakilala ko ang community kung saan nakilala ko si Kristo. I was so thirsty and hungry for God and His love. Nung nagsimula ang liturgical Bible study dito, I was so scared. <laughs> Kasi bago lang ako sa community. And I couldn't even say a single word to them. Pero that didn't stop me. Because I seek for His truth. And my first LBS struck me. Kasi I saw the word and it's so beautiful and it's so profound that I needed to know Him more. I go for LBS kahit sobrang nahihiya ako just for Jesus. My Savior, my Provider, my Rock. The more I wanted to give glory back to Him because the more I wanted to live the Word is the more I wanted to be like Him sa isip, sa salita at sa gawa. And the more I saw my life transforming authentically. Because I want to live my life now. So I can reunite myself with the Father eternally. I also saw the true meaning ng Misa. At napamahal dahil nakikita ko na na the greatest love story of my life is kundi si Jesu Cristo lamang. Gusto ko ay surrender buong buhay ko sa Kanya. At dahil sa pagmamahal niya sa akin, gusto ko ituloy to carry out His mission here on earth and make disciples of all nations. Ngayon, 11 years after, dahil sa biyaya ng Diyos, namumuhay na kaming pamilya sa maayos na bahay at nakakapag-travel din sa iba't ibang bansa. At ngayon rin, kahit only 3 years in the community, Ako ay isang pinakabata na mission volunteer dito sa Canada. Masayang, patuloy, naglilingkod at minamahal si Kristo at ang lahat ng nilikha niya. Ako si Katie Niana, katolikong Pilipino, nag-aalab ang puso para kay Kristo.
Hello everyone, I am Wally Magtibay, this is my wife Chinky, and our son Joaquin. We are all members of the Missionary Families of Christ. Ever since I introduced ako to Liturgical Bible Study or LBS back in 2008, I ko na magandang tool for evangelization and for strengthening the Catholic faith at LBS. Kaya naisip namin nun, together with my co-missionaries, na mag-start ang LBS sa mga coffee shops para mas marami pa ang makakilala kita. By God's grace, marami na ang muna evangelize through LBS sa mga coffee shops. It has been my personal mission to share God's word through LBS to other people. Kaya kung merong opportunity na mag-LBS, go lang na go. Minsan nga, kahit during family trips, nag-offer kami ng asawa ko to serve the area through LBS. Nung naka-experience naman ako ng LBS, na-feel ko naman it's very nourishing and it prepares me for Sunday Mass. So, I wanted also to join weekly LBS sessions. Um, but there came a time that we had no helpers, so we had to bring walk in with us. Um, no choice kasi. But little did we know that God was also already working to introduce him to the Word of God in a deeper way. So, kasama lang siya sa coffee shops and then he just does his thing at the side nalaro lang siya or drawing um, pero nakikinig pala siya kasi isang araw inuunahan na niya si Wally sa questioning who are the characters and then he asked paano, kung, paano maghanap ng verses so tinuro namin yung book yung chapters yung verses um, one day early morning we saw him um, with the kids devotional and a bible and what he was doing was that he was looking for the verses in the bible sabi nga niya na he's a good bible hunter already. So, in this ECQ time, it was a beautiful opportunity na magkaroon ng online LBS kids. So, we allowed him to join. And that on the first night that he joined, uh, ang prayer niya nung gabi, nagpasalamat siya kay Jesus for the LBS and asking kung meron pa ulit. And this is his new normal with the LBS sessions, daily masses, and family grocery time. Because we have been affirmed that it's the little things that will bring him closer to God to also bring him to a deeper personal relationship with him. Uh, like what I like about LBS is um, making me learn about Jesus and new people in the Bible. And I also uh, like about LBS is um, making me learn about what Jesus said, teaching and parables and stories and like making me ready for Sunday Mass. It, it's easy. The answers are in the Bible. Come join us. Um, it's more easy than you expect. Ako si Wally. Ako si Chinky. Ako si Joaquin. Kami, Kami ang Magtibay Family. Katolikong Pilipino nag-aaral ang puso para kay Cristo.
So settle far down in my soul that I can't contain, I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul. I can't contain that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. More you and less of me. I want more of you, God. 